Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today is the final installment of uh, the Z uh, vectoring axis, uh, which is going to be on the compound. Now I've got the compound off, I've got it taken apart, got it kind of cleaned up. It's not in the greatest of shape, but uh, I've, uh, I've marked my minimum and maximum travel on here. There's maximum. There's minimum. So the distance between this line and this line <clears throat> is my uh, minimum travel. Now, you have to take into account the reed head, and my reed head is actually bigger than my travel. So if I was to use a scale and, and lay it on the side of this compound with uh, the little end caps they give you, you know, you put little end caps here, and I got another one somewhere and maybe dropped another one there. My little scale is only that big and I, I run out of travel on the scale before I run out of travel on the compound. So uh, it's time to get creative. Now here's a, here's a scale that's already cut. This is actually just a scrap off of uh, the one I cut on the, on the, on the long axes. Um, you know, we kind of need to do this and eliminate the end caps and get rid of these. So I'm going to show you what I what I did, and I don't exactly want to block my T slot either. You know where my compound slides in and out. I definitely want this below the surface so I can swing my uh, tool post around. If it hangs off the side, so be it. You know, but I definitely don't want this in the way. And by the time I do this and drop a reed head on. And all that stuff, you know, I'm I'm not that crazy about it. These are my gib adjusting screws here. Those four holes are for the gib adjust, so I'm not that crazy about covering those up either. But I need to go coast to coast with a scale, so I'm I'm uh, gonna think out of the box here. We're gonna get rid of these end caps, and I've already done it. What I've done here is I've uh, uh, drilled all the way through and when you drill you drill actually behind the magnet and I did it out at the extreme ends you know just in case that affects the magnetic operation so it'll be I didn't want to put one out in the middle but you can see we're counterboard and uh, all the way through and that that bolt just passes right behind that strip magnet didn't even disturb it all right and uh, that's the same at both ends. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm actually mounting it sideways like this with no end caps. So uh, with no hopes of tramming whatsoever, after this is bolted down, it's done. Um, I'm going to take my top slide here off of my base of my compound. And... Thank goodness this is a, uh, a very blocky little piece, you know. It's not uh, one of those feng shui curved uh, things like you get on a South Bend, you know. Um, we, uh, that little fellow is going to go right there. It's going to be above my gib screws and below my T-nut slot, so my T-nuts will still slide out. So... Uh, Nice compact scale, was able to get it in there. I, I sat up uh, till midnight last night trying to figure out a way to build it <laughs> inside here. And if I got in here and milled all that out and dropped that scale in, I was thinking, you know what, I'm going to drop it in, I'm going to epoxy it in, and then all I got to do is figure out a reed head on the, on the base, you know, down here. But I've got a peg that sticks up here for my uh, lead screw nut, and then the lead screw comes all the way through to here, and it, would, it only leaves me about from here to here to get a reed head in, and I, I just don't have it. And I was going to mill out a pocket in here and drop the reed head in, and uh, you know if the compound was bigger, I would I might explore that. Uh, it'd be really cool to have it inside of the compound, just uh, completely protected. And in an oil bath. <laughs> These things work uh, uh, in some pretty hostile environments. But 
uh, this is what I elected to do uh, is mount this fellow sideways on here um, like I say we're, we're going to be able to get it in the mill this is all these are all machine surfaces all the way around I've cleaned it and stoned it all down so I got no uh, up stickers and I'll be able to get it in the mill and uh, uh, these are exactly five inches apart uh, so I already know what my hole spacing is so I, I can go down and I very accurately drill and tap my holes and uh, hopefully this will go in this will go in and bolt in and tram up right out of the gate because we're not going to have a second chance all right so uh, let me go get this uh, milled up and uh, the, we still got to figure out a read the read head too but uh, let's get let's get the scale on first okay we're over on the mill uh, we've got our compound uh, clamped in. I went ahead and trammed it across uh, where the ways actually run and uh, I tapped the vise around. Uh, I don't care if the vise is square. I don't care if the world is square. I don't care about anything. All I care about is that surface there is running straight. Now we're going to take our scale and we're going to put it, uh, you know, so we've got room to get to our grub screws and we still got room for a little bit of slop for our T-nut to get in and out. And I'm just going to tap in one of the two holes. And center it. Uh, I'm going to tap in one. I'm going to transfer punch in one hole. And then I'm going to let the mill pick up on that. I'm going to let the mill pick up on that hole and then travel my distance and just let the other one land where it may. I'm not going to punch both of them in. But uh, that's my best shot of getting these things in straight. We're going to uh, uh, use a very tiny uh, centering drill, or spotting drill actually, a very rigid uh, small spotting drill to get the hole started. And then we're going to drill and tap. dropping that point down in the hole lightly and now you can your fingernail can pick up on center see out here and I know to move back good there got a little little bit over here all right I'm happy there I'm gonna zero my DRO in both directions uh, this one will not be moving. And that's it. That's our first hole. And like I say, we're just doing the tiniest of spots. That's it. Now we move to our uh, next one. gives us a place for our drill bit to start. Okay, we're going down to a very specific depth, which is uh, 250.
And there's our dip. This is that gray iron as well. Okay, we're ready to tap holes. We're drilled and we're to depth. And uh, I thought I'd show off the, my tap uh, uh, guide that uh, the boys up in Canada made for me. That was from uh, Pierre and Phil up there. They made these hardened uh, tap followers. Very nice. And uh, we're gonna use uh, a little bit of compressed air, so watch your ears. All right, um, I'm going to use a very small amount of anchor lube, and I, when I say small, I really mean it this time. And we're going to get tap just started here. And these tap uh, T handles are awesome. The ones with always get the ones with the holes in the back. I've seen some that don't have holes in the back. Completely stupid. But that that tap fall, follower and that uh, tap guy just drops right in there real nice. And uh, I can feel us uh, grabbing already just with the spring tension. I'm not even pushing in or anything. Get these lights out of the way a little bit. The lighting department's hogging the show. And we might have to stop. Uh, this is a plug type tap, slow taper. We may have to stop on the way in and uh, pull back and blow out the... Uh, Blow out the hole. This is cast iron. This is that gray cast iron. That stuff that likes to clog up on you. And these little taps, boy, they're the ones that want to break on you too. Let me get that cleaned up and then we'll uh, finish up and go to depth. Yeah, we're clogging. You see all the way around, we're clogging up. Make sure you get back in the same thread. Little fine threads like this, you could very easily start a second set of threads. Yeah, we're back in the same ones. Okay. Yeah, we're cutting again. That feels like bottom. Yeah, that's bottom. So we made it. Okay, well I think we're ready to install. We'll go ahead and put this turkey on there. And while it's on the machine, we might as well just tram it, make sure it's Everything's going to be good. I mean, we might have a little bit of uh, wiggle room to move these things around, but I, I drilled tight holes. I did everything very, very snug. So I don't think we've got a whole lot of wiggle room here. But we're tightening up on there, no problems. So we've got good thread depth. And if I had to, yeah, I can move it about that much. Not a heck of a lot. So let's uh, let's tram it in. We can do it later on the machine too, but let's tram it in here. See how close our uh, 
our machine work was and how close we can get it here. Okay, it's secure. I have a Noga on into call base. And we can put it about so. Just about here, I think. I'm zero zero on my on my DRO, so I can get back there no problem. All right. Wow, okay. Overall trims within two thousandths. You know, I'll pretty much take that. Move this over a little bit. See if I can see if we can get it any better. As long as we're goofing off here. Even tightening the bolt makes that thing move around. Alright, let's see what we get here. Tightened. Alright, we improved it. We got it down to a thousandth. Let's go to the other side. Thousandth. Alright, we're calling it. We're good. We're happy. Okay, so we're back off the mill. There's. I'll show you the scale. That's where we, how we ended up with everything and you can probably see there I've created my own hash marks I checked this other scale which is going to be completely intact uh, this is just a cutoff piece from when I did the Z axis um, but I uh, copied it and I put the hash marks there <clears throat> my read head is going to be facing uh, to the rear of the compound as so and we've got our hash marks right there so they line up and they are correct all right uh, next up we need to make a bracket to mount this I don't know whether I'm going to use theirs or uh, what I'm going to do but uh, or make of one out from scratch but we will do something and uh, let's I got to put this kind of back together um, so I can fit my uh, height is the reed head's actually going down on the base and I want it to be able to travel back and forth too so I can see what's going on all right uh, our oh our stainless steel strip what do we do with that you know it's not secure anymore I did have the foresight to go ahead and tap the four holes in the ends and all we're gonna do is slip our strip in and uh, leave a little tab sticking out and I'll have two holes pre-punched I got a little hole punch and we're just going to wrap them around the corners and put some tiny little button head screws in the ends just so it wraps around those corners and to create a closure on the ends. That's how we're going to handle that. All right. So uh, let's get, let me get putting this thing together and I'll bring you back. Okay, so we got the compound all put back together. I got my scale mounted. Uh, and uh, now it's time to figure out what we're going to do with the reed head. Now, the reed head's going to go around like this. But if, if we mount it down here, we're way too low and it'll drag on the uh, aluminum um, extrusion. So we need to space it away. So I'm, I think we're going to make a little adapter block. I've got a gauge block here. This is a 100,000 gauge block. And I was just playing with them. I put in a 110 and a 120 and until I got my elevation that I liked. And we're just bringing this guy in right here. I'm looking down the cross section, and that thing is pretty much center of that scale. If anything, it might it could be a little taller, maybe like 110. So let me go grab a 110 block, and uh, we'll take a look at it again and see how our centering is on that. All right, I'm back with a uh, 110. We're gonna lay that turkey right there. Let's see if we like that any better. And push down tight to it. 
And I'm going to look down the side and, well, yeah, I kind of like that. Looks pretty good. As far as center of the scale that way. So uh, I think if we make a little plate that's 110 thousandths thick, um, we, can, we can make it. So we bolt it in here uh, with some counterboard uh, screws and then make it then that your um, reed head can bolt onto that and then that'll have a couple of tapped holes. So uh, we're going to make a 110 thousandths thick little plate to go in there. Okay, so we finished our bracket. We made it out of a piece of stock and we uh, milled it down. We got the thickness we wanted. In this case, it was, uh, I think it was 100 thousandths is what our last gauge block was. We drilled two holes. I staggered them just to offer a little bit of strength and we're ready to drop these on. Uh, these are drilled and tapped 440 and we're going to use a uh, countersunk so it doesn't interfere with the reed head. <sighs> I just love this tiny little tedious work. It's easy. It's not physically demanding. But it can be a little nerve wracking sometimes. Tapping 440s into cast iron. Okay. These should be well below the surface and out of the way of that reed head. Yep, that one's below. This one might not be. Yeah, that one might need a little more. Yeah, that one's still sticking up. Yeah, I'm going to have to go rework that, uh, that countersink a little bit. Okay, I'm back, and it's magically fixed. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> uh, I actually uh, dropped them both to a little, just a little bit and sunk them just to make sure I'm below the surface. And now I'm going to, uh, I've got my reed head ready. i got my hash marks that I created up here, hash marks here. This is the final time it's going on, or the final uh, positioning. So what I've done is I made a correct thickness aluminum plate. I put a notch in it. So my, this is my cutout where I loosen my nut to swing the, uh, the compound around. Um, I placed this exactly so I can get to every single grub screw uh, for tightening the gibbs. So, as soon as I move the carriage back and forth, those other two become accessible and it blocks these two. So I can get to all four. Um, and my reed head is going to go in right here. I've got my plastic spacer. I'm going to drop in there. So I'm just going to drop this reed head right there. I have a very gentle can't twist clamp that I'm going to put on the whole thing and just lightly pinch it in there. And I'm down on the aluminum. I'm lined up where I want to be. And we're on our spacer. And now I've got a transfer punch. I'm just going to come one hit here and one hit here. And now I can mill those two or drill those and tap those uh, for our metric uh, counterboard screws. And there's our two marks right there and there. Alrighty. So this thing is, uh, is out of here. And I, I might take this out and drill them. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do it on the mill so I can tram them across and get them nice and straight. But uh, I think we got a winner. We have very little adjustment here. You know, if I loosen the bolts here, I might get two or three thousandths. I might be able to fudge that head around a couple thousandths. But that's it. There is absolutely no chance of tramming this thing in. So we need to nail it the first time. Okay, I think we're ready for our final fit up here got our plate uh, tapped for the uh, um, for the reed head I had to take it off so I could deburr the back and give it a little quick sanding and dress it up a little bit so all right uh, we're ready for 440s in our countersunks
And those are self-aligning. They're going to pull down into their countersink. There they go again. Okay, that one's in. Now we can put our uh, spacer in here, just for giggles. Let's wipe off that magnet one last time. Put our spacer in, shim, whatever. It's getting pretty haggard. They sent me three of them. I've been using the same one over and over. Uh, hash marks lined up, read head on, hanging out the back, and uh, camera's in my way. I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. Okay. Let's see how this thing feels. Feels got a little drag on it. Not bad. I mean, we could probably move the scale down a little bit. Not much, but we could. Okay, it's got more drag. So I got a little bit of play out here with my with my scale. Pretty cool. I bet you that sucker reads just fine right now. Alright, that's as compact as I can make it. Okay, well I couldn't uh, just uh, install all this stuff and not plug it in and see it not work. Uh, we're on the bottom axis, which is the... the uh, it is also considered a Z. But it's a vectoring access, so it's uh, it's still pointed towards the spindle. Uh, it just comes in at a vector, and the vector is adjustable, and you can add it to your uh, X or your Z, either one, if you choose, or you can have it standalone like it is right now. Um, I did have to go into the menu and change the uh, uh, the scales. Uh, this is a one micron scale from the factory. These things default at five microns. So it's going to multiply your uh, um, reading here by a factor of five. So you, you'll get uh, some gross inaccuracies. But uh, everything works. It goes through its travel. This is as compact as I can make it. I'll swing it around so you can have one last look at it. We've got our, uh, our scale mounted horizontally. Uh, we drilled in knife edge. I was worried that those bolts would create a error or something but I've run the scale all the way to the extreme ends nothing um, we obviously got our spacing right because it's reading without any errors um, it's pretty compact my t-nut can come out either direction so I've got it low enough where it misses my t-nut I've got it high enough where it misses my grub screws for my gibbs um, I can get in there and tighten my bolt for my uh, swing it's away from the work um, you know, typically we keep these things at either 30 or 60, uh, so it's on, it's usually parked way over the, this way like this, so it's away from the work, this is the chuck side, but I appreciate you guys watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, what little this took, this, this was no big deal, I do this one in a couple hours, so uh, no big deal, and uh, uh, we'll catch you on the next one, thanks for watching.